Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to be providing some tips in working with velvet and velveteen. These fabrics are very luxurious, but they can be a little tricky to work with because they're both fabrics that are considered to having nap. Now what nap is, is you'll notice we have fibers coming out of one side of our fabric and that's what creates the texture of our velvet here. What this means is, if you do not follow the grain line rules and you sew two pieces together that are going in separate grain lines, when they're sewn together, they could appear like they're two different color fabric. Now that's why it's very important to follow the grain line rules when working with these type of fabrics. You also want to pay attention to the fabric information tag, both for the fabric width, because it may not be the usual 45 or 60 inch width, so you may have to buy more fabric, and also the content of the fabric. Some of these velvets can be very expensive, can be made out of silk, so you want to pay attention to see what the content is and what the care is. So if it's dry clean only, you want to pay attention to that. Also, when you purchase these fabrics, it's very important that you do not store them with it folded. Instead, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to roll these fabrics. If they're folded for an extended period of time, you can start to get fold lines into your fabric. When choosing a pattern, it's very important that you pick something simple that doesn't have a lot of details and seams and pleats and darts to it. So the less seams, the more simple it is, the better, because with velvet, we can't really use our iron. So you really wanna make sure that it's gonna look softer. Once you have your fabric and your pattern, go ahead, lay your fabric down right side up so you can feel the nice soft texture and you're gonna run your finger over it one way and then in the opposite direction. And it's very subtle, but one way should feel a little bit smoother. Also, there may be a color change where it may appear a little bit lighter. It's really hard to see. So the smoother side means that the fibers coming out of the fabric are lying flat. If you go in the opposite direction and it feels a little rougher or the color gets a little richer or darker, that means that the fibers are not exactly laying flat, but they're kind of going in the opposite direction and they feel a little rougher. This is gonna be important when laying out your pattern pieces. So you kinda of wanna decide which way you want the nap to run either down or going up along your garment. Most people like the nap to lay down. So the top of the pattern, if this was a bodice, the neckline or uh, bust line area would be up here and then the bottom of the pattern, the waistline area will be here. So then it's going smooth down your body. Once you make that decision, Go ahead and turn your fabric over and with a piece of chalk, fabric chalk, you're going to draw an arrow so you know which direction you want to lay your pattern pieces. Now the fabric is going to be single layer. You're cutting out each piece individually. Let me grab my pattern piece here and I'm going to place it so it goes in the direction of my arrow. So this is the top of my pattern, the bust line area, and then my waistline is down here. I'm going to go ahead, smooth it out. Now to pin it, I like to use these very fine pins. You can either use silk pins or these are pleating pins and you're going to pin it, but you're gonna to try to pin it as close to the edge as possible, trying to make it outside of your seam allowance and not in the inside because these can actually cause holes in your fabric and there's not really any way to get it. So I'm gonna go real close to the edge. Now if you need to cut out two pattern pieces or you have a pattern piece that's on the fold line, you're gonna cut out one, this one needs two, and then I'm going to flip it over in another section of the fabric and cut out its opposite. Now again, you'll notice even though I'm doing the opposite, I still have the top of the pattern and the bottom of the pattern going in the same direction. So I'm not flipping it over and now it's doing the opposite and I'm not going this way where it's going perpendicular. You always need to follow your arrow. If it's for a fold line, like if this needs to be placed in a fold line, I can draw an outline around my pattern, flip it over, and then continue on so I end up with one piece. For marking your pattern pieces, if you have any marks that you need to do, you can either use fabric chalk or you can use tailor tacks. Next, I'm gonna sew my two scrap pieces together. Again, I'm going to make sure before I place them that they are going in the same direction. So the nap's going down this way and it's rough going up this way. So they're both the same. I'm gonna lay one on top of the other. So now they're right side together. The problem is 
because we have this nap, you'll notice if you just take this to your machine and you start sewing it, what tends to happen are the pieces become uneven and they'll just start sliding apart. And when you finish sewing, all of a sudden they're not matching up anymore. We don't want that to happen. So we're gonna take whatever measures we need to to make sure that our pieces stay together correctly. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin my pieces together. Now you do need to make sure that you do not leave your straight pins in your fabric for a long period of time. When you pin it, you do what you need to do and then you take the pins out because you'll end up getting a fabric that starts having these little uh, wavy parts where the pins were. I'm going to take my pins and I'm going to place them parallel to the edge of where I'm gonna create my seam. Normally I place my pins like this, but in this particular case, I'm actually going like this because I'm going to hand base the two pieces together first before I sew them. Again, I'm trying to make sure that I pin outside of the seam allowance. So if my seam line is here, you'll notice my pin is between my seam line and the edge of my fabric. Let's go ahead and stick a couple more pins in here. Another option, if you don't wanna use pins and you don't wanna hand base, which is what I'm gonna show next, you can use a spray basting stitch or basting glue. So this is a spray, it's a glue, and you can just glue a little bit on the edge and then put the pieces together and then sew your seam. I would definitely highly recommend that you test it on a scrap of your fabric first to make sure it's not gonna discolor your fabric and then after 24 hours it no longer has the stickiness. It's just a temporary spray glue that you can use. So once I have it pinned, I'm then gonna get a little closer so then I can show you how I'm gonna hand stitch this into place. On to the hand sewing. So I have some needle and thread. I'm actually using a silk thread here. And it's a very easy basic stitch. Again, I'm trying to do my stitches either on the seam line or between the seam line and the edge. So then I don't have to worry about any holes inside of my dress. So I came up on one side, it really doesn't matter what side, but I'm going through both layers of my fabric. I'm gonna first do a long stitch or somewhat of a long stitch. And then the next stitch I do is I'm going to do a short stitch. So you're just gonna alternate between long stitches, short stitch, long stitch, short stitch. You can also do a small zigzag stitch and try to keep your stitches pretty even or straight as much as you can. So if you need to draw a line with your chalk, you can go ahead and do that. So there's my long stitch and then next I will do a short stitch. Once you have this all stitched, you can then take it to your machine so then we can do a final stitch. After I finish my basting stitch, I can go ahead and remove my straight pins. Now I'm ready to sew my final seam. I have silk thread again in my machine. I would definitely use a matching thread. I'm just using a contrasting one. You may have to loosen your tension a little bit. Before you start sewing, I would definitely fill the inside of your fabric again to make sure that the direction you're sewing in, you're sewing with a nap going down. Doesn't matter which way you want it when you actually wear your garment, but always sew it with the nap going in the direction of it lying flat and going down. For my needle, I have just a universal woven needle. This is uh, midway, about 80-20. Also, you notice my foot is a little bit different. I have actually put on a walking foot. If you don't have a walking foot and you're planning on sewing with a lot of velvet, I would definitely recommend investing in one, even though they are a little pricey, because what the difference is, is they have the feed dog in the top of the foot. We normally just have it on the bottom, but with it also on the top, it helps feed the fabric through more evenly. So again, your layers are going to stay together more. Also, I would recommend practicing on a couple of scraps first, just so that you can make sure that everything's gonna work out, the tension is fine, and then just go ahead and sew your seam. Let's talk a little bit about interfacing. Now remember I said we can't really use an iron, so therefore we cannot use fusible interfacing. Instead, you're gonna be using sewing interfacing. I have a sample right here. You'll notice no glue bubbles on it. Take your interfacing, place it on the wrong side of the piece that needs the interfacing. For this interfacing, there's no right side or wrong side. Just place it on there. 
You can either fit it exactly with the piece or make the interfacing a little bit smaller, but don't make it too small. Then you're just gonna baste around all the edges that will cover the interfacing. Make sure that you put your basting stitch between your seam line and the edge. So just like we did before, because we don't want our basting stitch to show up in our final product. For pressing your seams, we are not gonna be placing iron directly onto the fabric. Instead, we're gonna be using steam from the iron to lightly press it. You can't really expect your seams to lie perfectly flat. So make sure you have an iron that can provide steam and is not going to leak at all. I have my fabric right side down so the seam is faced up. You either wanna put your fabric on a needle board or if you don't have that, you can just put a plush terry cloth over your ironing board, which I have a towel over here. So that's gonna kind of protect our fabric because we don't wanna crush our fibers in the velvet. I'm gonna take my iron, place it over. Remember, I'm not placing on, it's just over my fabric. I'm gonna do some steam. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to kind of press it open. Now just be careful that your hand's not under here when you use the steam because you will burn yourself. Steam it, then come in after you move the iron away and just press it open with your fingers. The last thing I wanna talk about is going to be hemming. Now it's a good idea to let your garment hang on a hanger overnight before you attempt to hem it. So for me, what I like to do is, that we're gonna pretend like this is my raw edge. I just went ahead and did an overcast stitch. If you have a serger, you can also do a serging stitch. And I'm just gonna do a hand blind hem stitch. So I'm gonna come up underneath the raw edge. And you'll notice I'm not using any pins. I'm just kind of measuring with my sewing gauge and then I'm just holding it lightly with my finger because again, we don't want any pinholes. So I'm coming underneath my folded edge here with my needle so my knot is going to be hidden underneath. And I'm using my silk thread again. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the garment and then come up and grab a little bit of the raw edge of my hem. And again, grab a little bit of the garment and then a little bit of the raw edge. Obviously, if you use matching thread, you should not see this hem on the right side at all. So it's a nice, neat hem. It'll keep your garment looking soft and it'll just look really nice and professional. So those are some of my tips in working with velvet. We hope that it helps you in your next project where you're dealing with velvet or velveteen. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.